Hi guys, okay, today's video is gonna be about isoacoustics GIA isolation feet. I mean, what is this all about? Stereo product of the year, stereo product of the year winner. Lots of good stuff being said about these, but what are they? Basically, isolation feet are probably something that m people would be more familiar with when you're isolating things that are microphonic, something like valve amplifiers or turntables, and actually to some degree CD players, that they're susceptible to vibrations. So if you can isolate those vibrations, they should sound better. Now the idea here with the speakers is you're trying to isolate the speaker from seismic activity in the floor. Now, you would think, okay, if you had a wooden floor or a concrete floor or heavily thick carpet floor, there would be different levels of absorbency, reflectivity, that's completely true. But seismic activity is completely different. So I think what they're trying to talk about is tectonic plate movement, volcanism, so on and so on and so on which you wouldn't really notice. You, you're not gonna feel that unless you live in a particularly volcanically active area in the world. But they're saying, people out there are saying that this seismic activity will have an effect on how your speakers sound, particularly in the HF region, because the tweeter diaphragms are moving incredibly fast, several thousand Hertz. So I thought I would investigate if these things made any difference at all. So let's have a closer look at them and then we'll discuss if I thought they made any difference. So I'll show you some pictures of these in the, in the video edit, but basically both sets of speakers are now set up with these and it allows the speaker to move. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but if you look at that and the stand is staying to the floor, they are just able, we'll do it on this one, See that there? More forward and backwards rather than side to side, but they are able to wobble. Let's bring the camera down and we'll have a close look at the actual feet. So we're right at ground zero, and as you can see, all of my stands have these isolation feet on them. And they're pretty easy to level up. Uh, they're actually easier than spikes in a way, to be honest with you. You can actually get carpet spikes that fit to the bottom of these. So the spike goes into the carpet and then the cup, the actual moving part, fits onto the cup just to give you more grip. But I didn't feel I needed them because these rubber pads actually hold very well to the carpet. And I'm pretty pleased with them, as you can see. Let's see if I can wobble that one. So the idea being is it's isolating the vibrations of the floor from the speaker. I suppose you could argue that the floor itself would vibrate from the sound waves coming from the speaker, particularly low frequencies. But the idea here is to knock out any seismic activity going on in the floor. And I was hugely skeptical about this. Let's move the camera. So my skepticism was Let's give you an example that when I first got into hi-fi, most speakers were just plonked on the floor or on a sideboard and on very rudimentary stands, sometimes boxes, which are gonna add all kinds of coloration and resonance to the sound of your speakers. Move forward a few years with a slightly better understanding of equipment and realized that it was a good idea to have them on stands, dedicated stands, be it homemade ones or bought ones. Then I realized that if you had an uneven floor, your speakers would sit at funny angles. The speakers could actually vibrate off those. So isolation cups, little gel pads, or blue tack was a good idea, and spikes. And I've got to say, I certainly noticed a difference when I applied spikes to stands, that when I'd made the stand or the speaker, the whole system rigid and planted into the floor, I felt it sounded better. So when these things come along, you think, how is that gonna work? You just undone everything that I've done by spiking it and making it rigid to the floor. So everything else I've mentioned, you still have. You either wanna use blue tack or isolation cups to decouple and hold the speaker to the stands, but the isolation feet at the bottom actually decouple the whole system from the floor. And I'm thinking, logically, you've got a drive unit that's moving, particularly a base unit that's moving. That's energy being transferred forwards and backwards. If you played that loud enough, couldn't you actually make the thing swing? 
Well, I haven't actually been able to visibly detect that, but, but I should imagine to some level that's potentially happening. And my mind thought that's just going to knock out the energy from the base. It's going to actually reduce the base response. So I borrowed a pair, gave it a try. And the first pair I did was the Spendor Classic 2.3s on their Hi-Fi Rack stands. Now, firstly, the Hi-Fi Rack stands, being a fully open frame stand, 100% made an improvement to the sound of the Spendors. A, they're a stand that's designed for the speaker, and B, they're completely open framed and allowed even the bottom part of the cabinet to breathe. And I suppose C, they're isolated by very small gel cups, which means the finest points are touching the stand in the bottom corners where the, where the cabinet is its most rigid anyway. And they were spiked into the floor. Firstly, that setup I thought was a marked improvement over the metal stands I had been using with the Spendor Classic 2.3s. So I borrowed the, the isolation feet, set them all up, got the height right, and first thing I thought is, man, these wobble about all over the place. This is not gonna work. Set them all up, selected a track that I knew that was fairly bass heavy and expected to have a monumental reduction in bass. My initial thoughts concluded with that. I thought, yeah, I have lost bass. I was right. Logically, this wasn't gonna work and I proved myself right. However, when I listened to it a little bit longer and tried different tracks, tracks that didn't have such an obvious bass line to them, you know, dance music or digital music, moved forward through to class, uh, classical and jazz and more acoustic sounding proper instrument music. And I realized that it wasn't a lack of bass that I detected, it was a lack of bass overhang, a lack of boom in the room and a more accurate, tighter, more timed, coherent bass. So what I perceived initially as, as a reduction in bass was actually not a reduction, but a more coherent, better timed, tighter, more musical bass. So I thought, well, let's try the same methodology with a completely different style of speaker, which would be the LS35As, which I've got to say, set up in this room running the length of the room, even the Falcon Acoustics have pretty impressive bass response for such a small little system. So again, I set those all up and again, I thought, yeah, it's just reduced the bass. These are not really doing anything. They're doing exactly what I thought. They're knocking out the bass. Same process, went through very obviously bass heavy music and worked my way through into music, which is, is more natural, more, more earthy music, more human music. And I realized the same thing, less bass overhang, a more coherent, tighter bass. And as you do, you kind of rush around and set things up and try as many things as you can. After swapping these isolation feet around over the speakers throughout multiple tests and various different days, I realized that it wasn't actually just the bass that had been affected. The mid-range on the Spendor Classic 2.3s had also come forward a little bit and the treble, the HF, the upper registers had become a little bit more detailed. Now this could be a slight illusion because the bass had been slightly, not recessed, but set back speed it up, less overhang, that naturally gives you the impression of more mid-range or more HF. But the LS35As didn't have that much bass overhang. They're a much, much faster, more coherent system, being a much smaller drive unit. And exactly the same thing happened. The LS35As came more into balance. And I've got to say, they do work. I don't fully understand the science behind it, to be honest with you, because I... There's not obvious seismic activity going on in my house. There feels like there is if you're playing the music very loud and it's a particularly bassy track, then yeah, there is lots of vibrations traveling around the room. But using that as an example, with these isolation feet playing the spindles, which are a larger system, there isn't that boominess. It's not making the whole room vibrate. It's actually somehow reducing the seismic activity coming, or vibrations is a better way of putting it, coming from the actual speakers themselves so all in all they really do work so 
I don't know whether it's the seismic activity in the floor or if it's actually knocking out the transfer of energy from the system into the floor that actually makes them work. I can't answer that. I haven't got seismic measuring devices to see what's actually going on in my house. But honestly, I was quite shocked. So to completely summarise, I personally think that they're knocking out the transfer of energy from the speaker to the floor in a better way than spikes do. Although spikes give it a very fine point into the floor, it's still a metal spike that is going to send that energy through into the ground, be it a carpet, wooden floor or anything like that. As where these, being a wider platform, rubberized and able to float and move around, perhaps that's what they're doing because I can't really explain it, but they do work. So that's the little Dittenworks review today on the ISO Acoustics GIA 3s. Now I've gone for 3s due to the weight of my speakers. 2s handle a higher weight speaker and 1 handle the highest weight speaker. So if I still had Celestian A3s I would have probably had to have gone for GIA 2s or if I had some, I don't know, BMW 800s or something like that I would probably need the GIA 1s. But in a nutshell I'm pretty impressed that overall change in tonal characteristics to either set of speaker is a marked improvement. It's tighter, more coherent bass, you're not getting the overhang, the mid-range and the treble has cleaned up, sharpened up, and all in all, it's a really worthwhile tweak. Take care, guys. See you soon.